All right, can I slide down this? Woo. No? <laughs> hey guys, it's Jeff here from Home Renovision, and today we're doing a video um, that's really designed for the homeowner who n is gonna tackle a basement project or a major renovation, okay? What we're gonna talk about is drywall. We're gonna talk about how to order it, right? How to measure for it, how to get the right amount the first time, how to receive it into the house, how to organize your workspace, okay? Do you stand it up? Do you lay it down? Or there's all kinds of different rules and tips and tricks. So I'm just gonna give you all that information. By the end of this video, you're gonna be able to tackle that project, order the right amount of material, get it right the first time, and save yourself a lot of time and aggravation because there are a lot of things about drywall most people don't know. One of them is all the different dimensions that are available. I tackle all that information in another video. We'll put a link to the video description and throw a card up here for you if you haven't seen that recommend watching that one first okay because it's going to give you a lot of information that'll connect all the dots while i'm talking about this all right let's just talk about how to order drywall and the way it works is really simple my system is nice i'll start with uh half inch drywall and i'll just put eight and ten and twelve okay those are the three different length options and generally speaking a regular half inch drywall comes four feet wide okay now there's also another option that's the 54 inch now, this is not an option that most folks who shop at Home Depot are going to be familiar with because 54 inch is not sold there. They kind of stick to the real simples. Most Home Depots that are out there sell only half inch. They'll sell eights. Some of them will even sell nine foots. Okay. And they'll do tens and twelves. And then they'll do, in a lot of cases, a five eighths fire rated, but only, only one size, usually only the eight footers. All right. They're limited because they're in, in the aisle warehouse. So they limit their, their supply. And it leaves people thinking that those are the only options. But the truth is this, and I'll also tell you in this video where to go shopping so you can get all these options, okay? 54 inch drywall comes in eights, tens, and twelves as well. And some regions, I think the boards go even up to 16 feet long, all right? We don't have that here in Ontario, but I've seen it in the comments before. Some of the drywallers have commented and let us know that you can get really, really long sheets. They can get super heavy. Um, and then that, of course, is still only the half inch thick. And you have the same options in 5 eighths. So again, 8, 10, and 12, and the 54, eighths, 54 inch in the 5 eighths and the 8s, 10s, and 12s. So what I do is this. I'll just walk through the room and I'm like, all right, here's my ceiling. And of course it's strapped. I always strap my ceilings um, because it makes installing drywall so much easier. This particular ceiling, if we can get a look at this, Max, we got engineered floor joists going this way. And then we got a double LVL and then the joist change direction. Okay. And that lines up with the house. It's kind of built in, 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 in different dimensions. So by strapping, you get rid of all of that confusion. And now I have straight installation. Now I want to get a sheet that goes from one side to the other side so that there's no joints, no butt joints in the ceiling. Right. So I'll just take my tape, throw it on that ducting, come across here. And I'm like, Oh, I'm 12 feet. Okay, and because I've got an obstruction here, if it was 13, I'd build out a, a bulkhead here or a soffit so that I'm left with a perfect 12 foot. All right, that's how I order drywall. Keep it simple. If you can build to the dimensions that it comes in, it'll save you a lot of time and money when it comes time to installation and taping. I'm going to put a 12 foot sheet up here. If, if I had 12 feet and one inch of space, that'd be fine. I would just leave a gap on each side and let the walls fill that in. Okay. So we're going to just go like this. I'm ordering 16 on centers, right? So I'm going to go one, two, three. That's one sheet, two sheets, three sheets, four sheets, boom, ceiling. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to mark that. Now this is a theater room. So I'm going to be using five eighths and I'm going to be going uh, four foot because the heavy stuff up top, on, it's, it's difficult to manage. All right, so I just go one, two, three, four. And the next time I need one of those, I'll cross it out. Remember that old counting system? One, two, three, four, cross out makes five. And you go around the room and say you need one of these and two of these and then one of those and then three of these. And you keep track. You walk around the room, measure off all your ceiling, measure off all your walls, all right? And then when you're all done, grab a couple extra 12s because you're always going to do something dumb and you're going to have that material on hand. All right. Better to have it here now than have to go back to the store because you can't put 12 foot sheet of drywall in your car, can you? So that's your mercy. All right. And maybe you only need an eight foot and maybe you'll have the sheet left over when you're done. Who cares? Okay. That $20 investment 
keeps you from having to pay for a delivery or having a bunch of butt joints in the ceiling in one quarter driving you nuts. Now, once you've got your order, you're going to want to go and place that order at a place that will deliver. Traditionally, uh, box stores will drop it in your driveway, okay? I don't like that because when you're getting a whole basement load, by the time you finish carrying all that downstairs, you're exhausted. The day's over. No production that day, all right? What we do is uh, we always like to work with customers who have a nice wide window. And if you're building a house, for God's sake, put in something that's five feet wide because 54-inch drywall comes through here no problem at all. But if the window's only four feet, you can only buy four foot wide drywall, okay? We put a bar across, okay, that sits just a little bit higher than the vinyl trim on that window frame, all right? And so what happens is they'll drop the skid outside, they'll come with the truck, and they'll come with a couple of guys. They'll drive the skid right over next to the window, and then those two guys will feed it through, and it rests on this board, and it doesn't rest on the window trim. And they feed it through, and then it sits on this, and it slides down. And then you got to grab a friend or maybe one of the guys from the crew because in a lot of cases when you order drywall from a drywall company they'll send two or three guys out to help facilitate the delivery and you can just lift it and carry it and set it against the wall piece of cake right that takes no energy from you because you're just lifting and setting it against the wall that's all you got to do right these windows pop out real easy you slide it to the middle you lift it up and it pops right out of the trim okay nice now before the delivery comes, this is the key. And if the whole world did this, you, you, your deliveries would go a lot faster, right? You only want to have these guys here for like an hour and then you can get to work. Generally speaking, what I do is I take a black marker. I got plastic on my walls. I'm in a northern climate, so this is a vapor barrier. And I write down, my order is 20 pieces, 54 inch, 12 foot long, 5 eighths thick. Yeah, you can see that, all right? Now I take my whole order and every one of these different material lines that I have I've got to walk through my job site and I got to find a location to put that material. All right? So I measure off walls, I identify eight foot walls and 10 foot walls and 12 foot walls because I want to have all my material standing like this. If you set it on the ground flat, you're going to be cutting on the ground. Now that's okay if you've got 50 sheets in the middle of a room and you want to work that way. Um, sometimes that's the only option you have because you're in a smaller space and you can't leave it on a wall or you got to start by installing it on the walls, right? Here's a drywall square, traditional 48 inch tall, okay? You can see it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. <laughs> so if you're gonna get 54 inch drywall, you gotta get a 54 inch square, all right? This gives me the ability to take my pen or my pencil, right? Make lines, use a knife, cut my lines because it's sitting just about a quarter inch off the floor. No need for blocks, okay? If you use blocking, you're probably in a situation where your floor is going to be wet in an older house. You probably want to put blocking down. You want to isolate moisture transfer from the concrete into your drywall. This house is built, it's brand new. There's vapor barrier underneath the concrete and it's been sitting here for over a year. So the concrete's already cured. So don't worry about that. This is where I like to work because this right now is ready to go on my drywall lift and I can crank it up and start installing on my ceiling right away. Now, I got my order. I know that with the 20 sheets that are coming, they're going to come on the same skid. They're going to drive these 20 sheets over. They're going to feed me all 20 at the same time. We're going to stack them against the wall. The next part of the order comes in, and let's say it's uh, the half inch 12s, okay? And I got 16 of those. Well, I've got a different mark on a different location in the basement. And all we did was receive them and then set them where they go. I'm going to show you something here real quick. Now, because I don't have any strapping on the ground, I can walk on this drywall. It's not going to cause any damage. So I've got two different materials here, 54 eights and I got 54 tens, okay? They're both half inch and you can see that they're, they're, they're labeled that way, all right? All on the paper, okay? Now, the benefit of doing this is really simple because when they deliver, they also give me a, a, like a delivery bill and after everything's delivered off the truck, I can run around and mark off seven pieces, count it, check it, check it, check it. If you're just receiving it random and throwing it on different walls, you have no idea what you just received into your home, all right? Now, a couple of other things you want to know. Ah. The drywall is wonderful when you're doing a delivery. Here's a little secret, okay? Stick it on the ground. And the way you set it down is instead of bending over and carrying the weight and putting all that pressure on your back, just push it, all right? Problem solved. As long as you lift the edge, you get rid of all the friction on the paper, it's easy to manipulate, okay? Just dropping it means nobody gets hurt, nobody's going to pull a muscle, no one's going to be laid up in the 
a chair on the weekend, right? That's all great. The other thing about drywall that's awesome is the paper. Okay? That's how you take it apart. Both ends. And that is how it's delivered. White to white. This is your inside. This is your finished part of the board. The reason it's delivered like this is to protect this incidental damage. Footprints, rocks, gravel, that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so when you're storing it, keep it brown side up and then you're protecting your surface. There's nothing worse than doing all your taping and then going to a prime check and see a bunch of little um, uh, stone marks in the drywall because there was someone stone in a shoe or something and the white paper was facing up. Make sure you manage that situation. So I'm going to just demonstrate how to carry drywall. If you're working alone, have fun with your workout. But if you're working with a team, doing it the right way means you're not going to get hurt. Believe it or not, there's all kinds of injuries every day all over the world. People carrying this stuff wrong. And here's how you do it. You take your drywall with your one hand, you lift it, okay, and you take this hand and you reverse it and you grab from underneath. Don't try to walk like this because you're, you're, you're twisting your hips when you're walking, okay? Keep your back straight and your hips square and the guy behind you, he's going to do all the other work. All you got to do is hold it off the ground, maybe set it off your head a little bit, okay? Now, set that down now. I'm going to swap, I'll go to the back. Now, he's carrying with his right hand, all right? So, it's important that I carry with my right hand underneath. Don't go off the side, okay? It'll slip, you'll have injuries. You carry off the right side, and the guy in the back is, uses his other hand to reach over top and grab the side. And my job back here is to make sure that the board doesn't fall away from him, okay? His job is just to walk. My job is to steer. So I'm holding the control of the board, and I'm making sure everything goes out fine. Now, when it's time for us to set it down, what Matt does is he kind of turns to face and see me on the same side of the board, and then we both set it down. That's really all there is to it. Don't put one corner down first. You set it together. If you damage a corner, you got another whole day of taping to repair that corner before you can tape the project. That will save you a lot of time. Okay, same thing. We're gonna set the board down. And the reason this works so well is because as this falls, it's trapping the air, and the trapped air becomes the cushion that makes a nice soft landing. So just as it's about to hit the other piece of drywall, and you're thinking, oh my God, it's gonna break, it just grabs it, piece of cake. All right, now, when you're receiving your drywall order, you should have your walls framed. <laughs> what you're gonna find is that there's not enough space in a lot of cases to be able to walk through carrying drywall, all right? So take a reciprocator, cut through the nails on the top and the bottom, pull this stud out of the way, now you've got a walkway. Don't spend all day long walking around obstacles, removing a stud and screwing it back into place is that easy, all right? Two rules when you're doing drywall, you should follow. One, try to install your ceilings first. It just helps get a lot of material off the ground, right? Usually that's a larger part of the workload and you can't really install all your walls if you're just buried in drywall like I am. Here's something that most people never talk about. It's, it's a measuring tip, how to know, you know, am I getting a 12, 10 or an eight? This wall here is 16 feet and two inches, which means because I can get 12 foot drywall, I can get it done in two pieces, right? So that's one thing you need to know. Hey, is it two pieces? But you need to also understand this. When you measure off from the corner, all right, eight feet stops before the stud, okay? That's a problem because you can't install here. There's no wood. You always want to have your drywall line up in the middle of your stud, factory edge. So what I would do here is I would install a nine or a 10 on this side. And if I did a 10, it would take me over to this stud. And then I get an eight on this side, okay? So I got 18 feet of drywall. I know I'm gonna be on this stud right in the middle. I know that's a factory edge. So when I'm measuring to cut and install this, I have to make sure that I know which is my factory edge. Well, the brown paper showing out makes it very difficult to know. In order to flip it, you gotta be quick. Go, oh, or you'll snap the drywall. Okay, this is your factory edge. So what I would do is I would measure from my corner to the middle of my seam, which is here, okay? And I'm going with this, call this 112 and a quarter, okay? First rule of anything, write everything down. Get markers on plastic, it'll change your world. If you don't have plastic because you live far enough south and you have paper-faced insulation, you can just use pencil or marker on that insulation or you can draw on the stud, whatever you want to do. Now I take that, I want my factory edge here, so I measure from my factory edge to 112 and a quarter. That's where I'd make my cut. Same going down the other direction now, right? Now I gotta measure from here to the other end 
and then that piece of drywall you would measure from here. Just be visualizing where's the factory edge because if you make the mistake that a lot of people do and you don't consider measuring from a factory edge, you're going to have two cut edges and they're not going to be perfectly square and you're not going to get a very good installation that's going to crack. And here's why. Factory edge is cut like a laser sharp. And when you butt those two edges together on a piece of, on a, on a wall like this, and you put a screw on each side, the, the gypsum, it breaks off just a little bit, but it's so perfectly smooth and flat that you can install this square in a level and it compresses into the other piece of gypsum, okay? So when you're doing a, a butt edge and you're screwing it in, don't bury the screw all the way. Just get it started, catch wood, and wait for the other piece of drywall. And then when they're both there together, you can tighten up those screws like stitching together a wound. That'll keep it nice and flat and perfect for you. So then when you tape it, it's smooth. It's not going to crack over time. And it's not going to give you a weak spot on the wall. So if somebody bumps into it, it just collapses because it was cut crooked and filled with putty. And don't be that guy. All right. This is a drywall lift. It has a locking wheel release there. And these two kind of come around and it makes a tripod. All right, nice and simple. It comes in five pieces. This one is extremely heavy and it sits right in this cradle, right here. Bam, okay? And everything on here is gravity fed. This is a locking mechanism. You can get that out of the way. You don't wanna have that in engaged while you're working ever. Um, next piece is this here there's your pin you drop that in okay and oh, there it is it has a safety catch on it as well you can take that off and now this rolls okay which means your drywall goes in this rig and go flat or you can have it like this so when you can set it up and then you can roll it over all right we'll demonstrate that in a second now it has this little bracket here, okay? Set the triangle and it locks in. On the back side, it has a spring load. So you can just pinch this and lift it out again. There you go, that's installed properly. Here we are. Okay, one more feature. Boom, boom, boom. Right here off the end. This little flat section here, it's on a spring. It's a locking pin. This is a slide out arm and it pulls out and it has two positions that it'll lock engaged. All right, isn't that amazing? And here's why. I'll bring these down. Now it's set up to carry 12 feet of drywall. Okay, so this is how this works. Understand the, how this machine operates before you start using it. We got a handle. This is chain drive, no cables, okay? This is a newer model on the market. It's only been in a couple of years and every store should be renting this now, okay? And this is a release handle, all right? And that gets rid of the brake and it'll fall on its own power, okay? As soon as you let go of that, it's got a brake. Make sense? So you can lift it and it always breaks. Release the brake, bring it back under control so it doesn't just slam down on someone's head, okay? There we go, time to load. Make sure that these arms are down because you put the drywall onto that and it'll carry the weight. All right, here we go. Make sure that the white is facing the machine and then you just roll it over and all of that weight is supported. Now, if it's not perfectly balanced, it's gonna look like this, okay? And if you want it perfectly balanced, you wanna lift it up off the thing and then slide it over a little bit. You won't be able to drag it, okay? That's a little closer to, okay. That'll be better. Perfect, Woohoo! All right, now it's really heavy, but if it's here close to the middle, it's easy to manipulate. Now, this is how this works. Boom, 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 there we go, okay. <laughs> then just crawl under here and lift the bad boy up. All right. This will help develop muscles for fishing. It's actually a lot of weight. And you're lifting it with your own power, right? There we go. The way you can manipulate this machine is by pushing the wheels, okay? You can push the drywall, 
okay you can push everything around if you're hitting a stick you just left the other side and it'll drop okay and you can manipulate it in place now I haven't measured to cut and install this yet I'm obviously a little bit long but that's the basics for how this works